What is pick slanting? Do I use pick slanting? Does pick slanting even matter? That's what this video is going to talk about. And hey, let's answer those questions right now. Pick slanting, from my understanding, is basically how the pick is angled while facing the guitar to allow downward motion string escape or upward motion string escape. Yes, I do use pick slanting. Two-way pick slanting. Pick slanting matters sometimes. I'm also going to talk about how I develop the two-way pick slanting, when I use it, and when I don't. Now, some of you may be upset that I'm wearing shorts in this video, and well, I'm sorry, but it's it's rather warm weather right now, so I'm going to wear shorts and not pants. This is my basic understanding of pick slanting. Right now, the pick is pointing straight at the guitar. If I tilt the butt of the pick up, this makes it easy to do a downstroke and go away from the guitar. When I do an upstroke, that puts me in between the strings. So this is considered upward pick slanting. And I believe this would be considered a downward escaping motion. I might be getting this terminology wrong. Any cracking the code fans watching this, if you'd like to correct me, please do so. But basically, the upward pick slant, the butt of the pick is tilted up this way. A downstroke allows you to escape the strings. An upstroke will put you in between the strings. Downward pick slanting has the butt of the pick pointing down towards the ground. This will have you escape the strings on an upstroke. A downstroke puts you in between the strings. After I started teaching, my thought process of picking fast was to think about just going straight down and up in a straight line. Well, it doesn't really work that way. Nobody ever just goes straight down and up. A lot of people will have this hooking motion. And I am exaggerating the motion right now just to make it easier to see. But as you get going faster, things change a little bit. You can't really get away with that type of motion anymore. You will tend to default to either an upward slant or downward slant. My fastest picking has a more upward slant position. But it changes depending on what I'm playing. Now I developed this two-way slanting method completely unaware that I was doing it, but doing thousands and thousands of hours of metronome practice over my 20 plus years of playing has allowed me to adapt this kind of two-way pick slanting approach without even realizing it. I just focused on making everything sound good. And then my hand just started to do what it needed to do in order to play what I wanted to play. I only became aware of the two-way pick slanting after Troy Grady from Cracking the Code pointed out to me exactly what I was doing and when I was doing it. This knowledge has been very useful in allowing me to become a more accurate player. To demonstrate what it looks like when I'm doing this two-way pick slanting and how it starts to look when it goes away, this is the pattern I'm going to use. I'm choosing this because not only does it use the two-way slanting stuff, but it's something my left hand doesn't have to think about too much. When you are trying to push your max picking speeds and you want to match fret hand work with it, it has to be something you can play fairly simple. Starting off slow, a lot of thumb movement will be used to play this.
Now you may see that my arm is doing a little bit of this stuff going from one string to the next. My arm does that little turn to avoid hitting the string I'm leaving with the pick. Now starting off, I can stay in this upward pick slant because in the upward pick slant, when I do that downstroke, I am out of the way of the strings. So right there, going from the B string to the G string, my arm does this little movement here because now it wants to get out of the way of the G string for this next downstroke. If it didn't do that, I'd have to pick through both the B and the G string, which is something I'm going to do once I get too fast. Now on the G string, I'm going to leave the G string on a downstroke and with the upward pick slant, I don't have to do this motion because my pick is already out of the way of the strings. But leaving the D string, I do need to move my arm in order to change the angle of the pick so I can escape the strings and not hit them as I transfer from the D to the A string. See if you can spot that happening as I go to the next speed. As I progress in speed, what moves the pick changes. And as I get into pure elbow picking speed, I can no longer move the pick into the other pick slant because it ends up going too fast. When it gets to that kind of speed, I have to do swiping. And that means I will be muting with my fretting hand, muting the strings I don't want to hear. And I'm just gonna pick straight through the strings and I'm going to hit adjacent strings with my pick, no matter what direction I'm going. And as long as it's muted well enough with the left hand, it won't matter because it will still sound the way I want it to sound. This speed is definitely all elbow picking. At this speed, I have no choice but to mute the strings I'm not playing with my left hand this way, my pick can swipe straight through the strings as I am transferring after doing an upstroke. An important thing to remember is when I have this upward slant position, I am far less likely to hit an adjacent string if I'm changing strings after a downstroke. But after changing strings with an upstroke, I'm going to hit the next string. Now, when I hit this next note, I'm going to be doing it with an upstroke and I have to hit both the B string and go through the G string. So now I can hit the G string on a downstroke and continue the alternate picking. Now watch, I'm going to do an upstroke and blast through the D and the A string. And now hit the downstroke on the A string and continue the alternate picking. go through both strings. Go through both strings. point of this video is to demonstrate that I do use two-way pick slanting. Eventually I get going so fast that I can't use two-way pick slanting. And with the question of does it matter? Does pick slanting matter? Well yes it matters if you want to change strings without hitting adjacent strings, but eventually you get going so fast it doesn't matter because you're going to end up hitting adjacent strings no matter what. So you have to do a very good job of muting with your fretting hand. 
when I started teaching, I would tell people just move the pick in a straight down up line. I had no idea that I was going down and out or up and out from the guitar. The first time Troy Grady from Cracking the Code did an interview with me, he got a lot of footage of my playing and he was kind enough to do about a 25 minute video where he had close up of my picking and he broke it down. All these different things that I was playing, he showed me, well, in this instance, you're doing the upward pick slanting and you're escaping the strings as you do a downstroke. And in other instances, you're doing a downward pick slant and escaping the strings during an upstroke. Sometimes I would use two-way pick slanting, such as ascending a scale, but then use swiping to descend the scale. I had been playing for almost 20 years before Troy pointed this stuff out to me. I firmly believe the only reason I developed the whole two-way pick slanting and swiping without ever knowing is because I did exactly what I tell my students to do. Focus on making it sound good. I have done thousands of hours of metronome work, starting slow and only increasing the metronome after what I am practicing sounded good enough to be on a recording. For example, let's say I'm doing a four bar exercise. After I go through those four bars, if it sounded good enough to be on a recording, I would increase the metronome from 60 to 65. And then I would do it again, play it correctly once, increase the metronome five. And I keep doing that again and again and again. I will still do that to this day, having played for more than 20 years. That metronome approach allowed me to focus on making everything sound good at all kinds of different speeds. As I got faster, I allowed my fingers, wrist, arm to do what felt necessary to go faster. I did not force myself into a motion that did not allow for faster playing. This is why I tell my students, don't worry about how your picking looks, make it sound good. If I notice that my students are using picking that is definitely going to prevent them from going faster, then we address it. But if the speed continues to increase for them and it continues to sound good, I don't say anything to get them into the whole paralysis by analysis mentality. I have used the knowledge of pick slanting or escape motions in order to make certain things I play more accurate if I'm having a difficult time. There's definitely benefits to understanding how you pick in order to take you to a more accurate level. This can also take you to a faster level. To sum up the whole point of this video, does pick slanting matter? It can. When you're playing really slow, doesn't really matter. It's not gonna affect too much stuff. As you get going faster, you will notice that you tend to favor upward pick slanting or downward pick slanting. Either one is fine. Some riffs will require more of an upward slant. Some riffs will require more of a downward slant. Palm mute heavy riffs require more downward pick slanting. The fastest of the fastest riffs may require you to do more of an upward slant. People like Zach Wilde, they're definitely in a downward slant and they play pretty damn fast. He's doing quite fine for himself. I use the upward slant for my fastest playing. I can't go above 300 beats per minute without using an upward slant. Not everybody cares about going that fast. However, finding out what pick slant direction, what movements work for you to go your fastest, that's what matters. I can't play stuff like Zach Wilde. I cannot be stuck in that downward pick slant the same way he can. I would have to be in an upper slant more often and then just go into the downward slant every now and then in order to play some of what he plays. All of us will have a slightly different approach to our mechanics, what our hands look like, how the pick looks when we're playing. The most important thing is making it sound good. So don't force yourself to stay in a picking motion that is ineffective. Allow your hand, your wrist, and your arm to help move that pick faster and faster when you need it to. Working things up slowly with the metronome can help you cultivate awareness of what your picking hand is doing as you get faster and faster. The more awareness you have of how you play can bring about more accurate playing and faster playing. So a big thing to remember when you do your metronome work to get faster and faster and faster, just ask yourself, did that sound good? Was that good enough to be on a recording? If the answer is yes, increase that metronome. If the answer is no, 
play it better. And allow yourself to experiment with holding the pick in slightly different angles. Use slightly different joints. Use slightly different mechanics to see if it helps you go faster. Use more wrist. Use more arm. See what works. See what allows you to go faster. Experiment. Learn how your hands move. Learn how your body works.